Good afternoon, friends. Stephen Benoon here with Israeli News Live. And uh, I had a very insightful conversation uh, with three young adults this evening. And uh, one of them is a world history teacher. Uh, the other is, uh, I guess you would say, a loan officer or investor. I'm not really sure how I would describe her job there. Uh, and then the third, uh, former banker, now stay-at-home mom. And I did that mainly because I wanted to get a little bit better perspective of young people when it comes to this election that we're facing in November. Going to get into that later in the broadcast, uh, but I'm personally not interested in the political side of this because I really am not very favorable of any of the candidates that are running. But nonetheless, I want to point out some things to you guys that you may not be paying much attention to. So... Before we get into that, though, we want to get into some of the world uh, headlines that are happening right now, Iran, Israel, and of course, that could be even happening as we speak, uh, as far as retaliation coming from Iran. Uh, another issue we're going to look at uh, tonight is going to be Russia, Ukraine, and uh, that situation also heating up very much so. So let me get right into this right now. Attack inside Israel ordered by Iran's supreme leader. He has ordered the attack in retaliation uh, for uh, the, the attack that Israel did uh, that left uh, the Hamas leader, Haniye, uh, dead right there at the time of the presidential um, uh, inauguration of the new Iranian president. It says here the Ayatollah Ali Khamenei, uh, uh, excuse me, Iran's supreme leader has ordered a direct attack inside of Israel as a response to the killing of Hamas political leader uh, Ismail Haniyeh. In the Tehran on Wednesday, the New York Times cites three Iranian sources as actually uh, saying that this is what he's decided to do. But oddly enough, in two other articles, we get a little bit of a differing uh, thing that came out. The Jerusalem Post, and by the way, the Jerusalem Post is not the only one that is saying this, also in American media outlets. Iranian President uh, Pizishkin asked a Supreme Leader to refrain from attacking Israel. That's a report that came out uh, actually today uh, on uh, the Jerusalem Post there. He's claiming that he doesn't want the Ayatollah to actually to attack Israel in his belief that it would actually bring a complete uh, mayhem, a chaos uh, of destruction to the, uh, the country of Iran. And I would agree with him on that respect there, although I do not uh, think it is necessary for Iran to be attacked uh, by no means. I know that this has been a push by the Israeli uh, government, especially Prime Minister Netanyahu for a long time, always citing that Iran could have nuclear weapons if we don't attack and attack now. Well, he said the same thing about Saddam Hussein uh, over this whole issue of Iraq, excuse me, Iraq, yes, Iraq, and, uh, and said he had weapons of mass destruction. We must go in there. And after all, George Bush wanted to attack, too, because of the downing of the Twin Towers. But I never really meant, never, did it ever make any sense? Do you ever really think about it? I mean, after all, the Twin Towers were supposedly attacked by Saudi nationals. All the people that were hijacking the planes were from Saudi Arabia. Why then do you attack a country called Iraq for the sins and crimes of the Saudis? And I'm saying, allegedly, there is a lot of conspiracies out there about the Twin Towers. And I am very much inclined to believe that another country in the Middle East, not Saudi Arabia, not Iran, not Iraq, not even Syria, nor Lebanon, nor Jordan. Well, we're kind of running out of countries. You can't go much further west without running into another country there. Um, and then after that, you hit the Mediterranean that is responsible for the 9-11 attacks there. Been a lot of publications to prove that. Uh, anyway, let me, let's, uh, let's continue on though. Then uh, we have, have this here. Now the timestamps on this, this is 3.39 PM press TV says Pishkani, uh, I'm trying to say his name right, Pizeshkian, 
the uh, Iran won't renounce right to retaliate Hanye assassination, according to their report. But according to the Jerusalem Post, which came out, uh, ooh, let's see the timestamp on that one there was 2216, uh, which uh, August uh, 7th, uh, that would be uh, it's getting a little after 10 o'clock at night at that time there. So I'm not sure, though, are, uh, is this article here going according to Western time, which would be 3.39 p.m. Eastern time. If that's the case, and I think Israel is seven hours ahead, that would have put this article here, that article there, about 15 minutes apart, give or take a few. Not really sure. So the question is, one says that he's, you know, that they're going to retaliate. He's going to say retaliate in one. The other one is saying that, uh, no, he's not going to retaliate. And in fact, in uh, Israel National News, they put in there that he was begging the Khomeini not to attack. Uh, it's always been interesting, and I've not actually spoken to my uh, counterpart who is was born in Iran, uh, who's given me a lot of tremendous good information over the years, uh, including that of Soleimani. Uh, I knew every step of the way of the Soleimani, of the Houthis, everything that was happening back in the earlier days on that. And we do stay in touch, and we have talked extensively about Iran's role. He was shocked when Iran attacked Israel. In fact, he actually said to me there were pressure. The pressure was so great from the generals to do a response that the Khomeini had no other choice but to respond. That seems to be very much in line with what's going on even now. And so I feel like that that is probably what we're seeing. The generals are really putting the, uh, the pressure on him to strike Israel in retaliation for what happened. And, and quite frankly, you know, even if you are a strong supporter of Israel, it is totally unethical to go and assassinate a man, especially a man who is actually considered, uh, he is considered to be the head negotiator for Hamas, to negotiating the release of your hostages, and then you assassinate him. Do you realize the danger you put the, the very people, the very captives, the very hostages, the Israeli hostages that are still held in captivity, the danger you just put them in by assassinating this man. You know, and, and granted, I would have to say it might be one thing had he been in Gaza, which, of course, naturally, the head leaders of Hamas are not going to be in Gaza. They're going to always be somewhere else in some other country because they're never a part of the real things that are going on on the ground. Only the poor Palestinians in Gaza are facing the deadly, brute, brunt force of the Israeli military while the leaders that make all their decisions sit somewhere nice and comfortable in nice plush hotels. But in this particular case in Iran, Israel decided to do a little f further reaching, and I'm sure that with the help a little bit with the United States military, and they struck and they killed this man. Now, Iran is faced for that retaliation. Some are saying, though, that it will be actually, and I think as uh, Golant from the Israeli, Golant, yeah, Golant warns Hezbollah may hit Israel harder than Iran in that retaliatory attack. And why? Why would Hezbollah hit harder? Because also Hezbollah lost one of their own men. Now, granted, he had a $5 million price tag on his head, and... Uh, because of the Beirut bombing that killed a lot of American soldiers. And although in the beginning I was very critical of that strike that Israel did because they hit in the heart of Beirut, it killed a mother and her children, uh, which was you know really deplorable in the first place. Uh, if you're going to target someone, which I'm not for the targeting of anyone, period. So I want to make sure I make that part clear. But if Israel really is going to target someone, you, you knew where he was before he went into the building. Let's face it. If you know he's going to be in the building, you knew where he was before he went into the building. I'm sure there was a much safer way to target this man than taking out the entire building and killing innocent and injuring a lot of innocent people that didn't have to be injured. Now, that's just my two cents on that. Uh, says here, Defense Minister Yoav Gallant warned on Wednesday that Hezbollah may hit Israel harder than Iran, noting that it may 
uh, misread and downplay how hard Israel will hit back if civilians are killed. I don't think, Mr. Gallant, that Hezbollah is underestimating how hard you will hit back. I mean, let's just face it. What happened on October the 7th, a major, major tragedy to the Israeli people, the most deplorable deaths on record in Israel's history, but so questionable of who was really responsible. Yes, Hamas did carry out the attack. Who gave them that green light? Who opened up the door for them to be able to make the attack? Oh, while wow, they're over there struggling to get to the fence and everything, and not a single soldier nowhere to be seen. Look on the videos. Can't find a soldier, an Israeli soldier nowhere, while wow, they're working and trying to get the fence all tore apart, blown up, or whatever the case may be. Do you know how many Israelis, Israelis wrote me and told me, there's no way, Steve, that could have happened. No way. I'm talking about one Israeli friend that I had that wrote me that said this and even put me in touch with a former IDF soldier that was assigned to the very battalion that was struck. His parents survived Auschwitz. He was born in Israel. And even, I, I can't tell you how many Israelis knew that this totally was an inside job. But you know what? Regardless if it's an inside job or not, Israelis paid, the, they paid with their lives. And yes, there were a lot of Hamas fighters in amongst them. And I say in amongst them because I listened to the videos. I clearly could hear good English speaking people. <laughs> wow. I say good English speaking people, but I could tell they were not American. Where did they come from? Think about it. Anyway, they lost their lives on October the 7th. So Israel, though, Naturally, the people are going to come together because most Israelis, I shouldn't say most, maybe a little over the majority of the Israelis are going to really believe that an attack was done on the country and that the country just got caught off guard. They're not really willing to scrutinize and analyze. It's always the minority that will do that. But, you know, I even had inside sources from government people in Israel telling me that it was an inside job. And they knew it, but they hate Palestinians so bad they didn't care. You know, the thing is, I care about the people on both sides. I don't want to see Hezbollah respond and start killing Israelis either. But I would like to see some government officials somewhere have the courage to stand up and tell Israel no more. No more weapons, no more bombs, no more nothing. You stop attacking them and go in there and militarily make sure that these people can get what they need. If you, When I say militarily, in other words, if you have to take your ships and bring them in there to where Israel knows that you're not playing around, you're going to help these people get back on their feet. But no, they're trying to starve them out, push them out, disease them out, kill them out, whatever they can. And what's really strange is you know that all these hostages are there. They've been there for 10 months. You ain't done a very good job at rescuing anybody. Do you not realize that they are probably on the brink of starvation as well? Think about it. And you know, I know the Israeli people, you're under such... There, there's like a really a divide in the country. You have to understand, there's so many people that just hate Palestinians. And it maybe it is a split in the country because there's a lot of Israelis that love Palestinian people. They're not very trusting. I know that. I live there. I know how it is. And you really get blinded by the rhetoric. And especially if they live in the West Bank, they really are blinded by the rhetoric. Sadly, it's normally the secular Israelis that know that what's going on is just totally wrong. Just totally wrong. 
you know. I was just the opposite. At one time, I was so pro-Israel, you know. In fact, we actually did a video. We, we did it and sent it to Netanyahu showing our support, our solidarity. That we, I think it was called We Stand With Israel. And I had so, so many of you send me your responses, and it was so beautiful. We stand, we unconditionally stand with Israel, right? How stupid was I ever to do that? Unconditionally. Even the God of heaven doesn't do it unconditionally. Even the God of heaven actually said, if you do this, I will do this. If you don't do this, then this is what I will do. And he said to him, I won't drive out your enemies anymore. Do you know that's actually the law they're under right now? I won't drive out your enemies anymore. Think about that. Hmm. And this whole thing about, you know, those that might be listening might say, well, Steve, God always said to them, go in there and kill every man, woman, and child. They have a right to do it. Then you negate the blood of Jesus Christ. I hope you're not a Christian saying that. And if you are a Christian, I just hope that maybe by God's grace, you'll realize that the blood of Jesus Christ has put them on a different standing right now. They have a right. It doesn't make being Jewish higher authority. It now puts you on an even plateau as brother and sister. If you truly believe that everyone come from Adam and Eve on this earth, then what makes one people greater than another? That's just supremacy. That's no different than Adolf Hitler trying to bring about racial supremacy in his country. What's the difference? So think about it, okay? And I'm sorry, I got on this long rant here. I'm just trying to get people to think. I really am because it's a very sad situation, you know? And, and I'm not justifying either Palestinians going in there and killing Israelis or knifing them in the street. That's not the answer either. If you're Palestinian and you're listening to me, the answer is not violence back to them. I mean, really and truly, there needs to be somewhere a political situation that could resolve this whole issue. And I don't see one. I don't. You know, the bad thing is here in America... You know, let's face it, the, 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 the Israeli lobby owns the House and the Senate both. When Netanyahu went there, it was like a cult ceremony. You know, I stand with the Jewish people in Israel, the Israelis. I'll say this, I stand with Israelis that want to bring peace to the Middle East. That's what I stand with. I stand with the Christians that are also in the Middle East. And it doesn't matter to me if they're Israeli or if they're Palestinian. They're Christians. I don't care. You know, even if you're Muslim, I don't hold that against a person because they're Muslim either. It's just another religious view. If we can be friends, and, uh, okay, let me get off this soapbox. I'm sorry about that. Hezbollah. All right, so we already see this thing with uh, knowing that this could be a real problem, right? I want to share with you a little bit about what Al Jazeera was saying here on he about Hezbollah here. Let's listen. Forces have been bombing towns and villages. We witnessed an airstrike on Kafr Killer not far from where I'm standing here in Marjayun. Now, we understand in the town of Juwaya, two people were killed, a Hezbollah fighter and a civilian, and authorities say six people were injured. Now, Israel did claim that they killed the commander of an anti-tank missile unit, but Hezbollah say uh, that he was just a fighter. Now, as a response to that, Hezbollah have said that they've targeted the Northern Corps headquarters, uh, Israeli Northern Corps headquarters in the Ain Zitan base. Now Hezbollah also released drone footage of what appears, what appears to be a drone strike against an Israeli military personnel carrier in the occupied Kafar Shuba hills. Now we've also heard explosions reverberating here, we've heard aircraft overhead as well as drones. Now but what people are really waiting for is this promised Hezbollah retaliation for the killing of their senior commander Fuad Shukar. And when that retaliation takes place, we don't know when or how or what it will be, but when it does take place, it could signify the next stage in this conflict. And that's exactly right. It will definitely uh, signify the next stage in the conflict because Israel's not going to take it lying down. Israel is going to broaden the war. Uh, I mean, let's face it, even uh, Amir recently on one of his broadcasts, he was talking about Ezekiel 38, which I am going to 
definitely do a video about that. Uh, and I'm not here condemning him and his, his opinion. He does believe that they're on the verge of an Ezekiel 38 war. Uh, he also says in that one video that he did that he believes that uh, Israel will get defeated and that God himself will step in, that they will be there will be earthquakes and, and volcanoes and everything else going off that Israel doesn't happen to have that type of weaponry. If you go to our Patreon channel, I actually did a video. Oh, actually, no, you know what? I haven't even loaded that video. I've done it, but I haven't loaded it yet. It was actually my Thursday night teaching uh, last Thursday, and I do need to get that up on our Patreon channel. Uh, I had to do some editing on that, but I actually show some redacted um, information from Israel where Israel does have the technology to do the earthquakes, etc. I had to do a lot of redacting because there's information in there that I can just not cannot share publicly. Uh, anyway, so I wanted to show you that we are getting very close to being on that. Also, Ukraine, the incursion, Russia into the Kirks region continues into its second day there. Uh, the Kirks region, just to kind of give you an aerial view, here is Ukraine right here. You see this jaggedy line here, Ukraine's to the south part or bottom left side of your screen. Kirks is only a town. It's about nine, eight miles across the border right there. A uh, little tiny bitty town, so it wouldn't be hard for... for Ukrainian troops to overrun that town and really I believe what they're doing this for is they're overrunning places like that in Russia to distract Russia's attention uh, from their gains that they're making and uh, and to cause humiliation for Russia with inside their own uh, boundaries there. So uh, Putin convenes a meeting with the top officials as defense ministry acknowledges fighting is ongoing and uh, says Ukraine's surprise incursion into the Russian Kirks region has continued into a second day, prompting Vladimir Putin to convene a meeting with his top defense uh, and law enforcement officials. By the way, from what I understand, since this article has came out, they did repel them. They sent them back in. There's been a lot of redacting footages and what they showed there, Russia destroying all of their tanks. Uh, Russia went in there and didn't play games. They went in there and mopped up uh, those troops that came in. So it's it's really like suicide missions to go into the side of Russia for sure. Uh, also, Reuters reporting here, uh, a top Russian official told Ukraine on Tuesday that lo the longer it waited for, to enter peace talks, the tougher the terms would be for its people. Moscow has said talks must be based on Ukraine ceding land, amounting to a fifth of its territory, uh, much of it seized by Russian forces, and renouncing pro any prospects of joining the Western-led NATO alliance terms that Ukraine has dismissed out of, out of hand. Um, you know, so that's very interesting. Sergei Soyko, Secretary of the Russian Security Council, and, and until recently President Vladimir Putin's defense minister, said that since Putin had proposed peace terms on June 14th, Ukraine had lost 420 square kilometers, about 162 square miles of territory, and much blood as a result. So they are suffering. Ukraine basically has no military left. It has really been down to nothing. Even they, they're having a very difficult time recruiting, uh, uh, you know, paid fighters, uh, you know, mercenaries to come in because the, the death toll is so great, so high that people just know you go in there, you're going to die, most likely. Uh, I forget a friend of mine from Ukraine said to me at one point that the life expectancy on the front lines is about four hours for Ukrainian soldiers. So, uh, at any rate, that's kind of cl concludes that there. I, what I wanted to share with you, though, this is uh, about Kamala Harris. And the uh, reason I'm bringing this up, I am I'm not uh, pro-Kamala, I'm not pro-Trump, uh, nor am I pro-Kennedy. Um, uh, uh, in, fact, in fact, at one time, if anything, I probably would have been more for Kennedy uh, than I would have been for anybody else until I saw that he went and apologized for all the things that were offending the Jewish lobby instead. And I'm not saying here that you have to go against the, the, the Jewish, or is, I should prefer to call it the Israeli lobby, uh, but the thing is, be neutral, be honest, be, you know, more... Ha don't just pander to everybody because they give you money. That's totally ridiculous. You know, in fact, I think really what they should have in this country is that presidential candidates... Maybe we should go to a system to where you don't get donations from anybody. 
You know, I think maybe they should have it where Democrats and Republicans, they put money into some kind of a, a legal fund and stuff like that. And those that run for those offices, they they limit it to, to so many candidates could actually get into there based on qualifications. And then at the end of the day, the government gives them so much money. And that's how they run their campaign. They each get an equal amount of money. They run their campaign, and then the people can really see what the candidate is made of. That way, no one could be bought and paid for by special interest groups. Anyway, the point I wanted to make about Kamala, though, I think that the Republicans are greatly, greatly underestimating this woman and what she may do come this November. A lot of people are saying, you know, well, she doesn't have... She doesn't have what it takes to be president, things like that. You know, look, I get all that. Um, but she's got a lot of smart people behind her. Okay? Uh, I have a feeling she knew there was a good chance she was going to be in that seat because clearly Biden didn't have what it takes. And maybe Biden hang, hung in there that long because he knew he couldn't have any other contenders that would bump her out. But she stands for women, women's rights, etc. And really, I, in fact, I spoke, I took three people, ages uh, 30 to nearly 40. I wanted to get some perspectives. I had a school teacher involved, uh, a, a person into the money manager, well, I should say money management, banking. Uh, I don't really know how to describe her particular position. Another, a stay at home mom. And uh, I wanted to get some perspectives from these individuals about what the younger generation is saying, what those their different peer groups are saying. And um, clearly, though, in all three of them, none of them were for Trump. Um, and uh, let me just let me clarify that just to be on the safe side, though. I, I, let me see. Uh, I may be wrong on that. Maybe one was for Trump. The other two were not. Um, okay. No. Yeah, that's, that's correct. None of them were for Trump. Uh, one was against Kamala. And the other the other two, uh, one was divided on whether it would be Kamala or uh, or uh, Kennedy. More pro-Kennedy than, than, than she was for, uh, for Kamala. And oddly enough, the school teacher, a man, uh, was very pro Kamala. And from what I could understand, a lot of his peers that he was around also were very pro Kamala. And one particular venue that he works in, he said that everyone is very tight lipped about their political views. And I heard that pretty much with all three uh, that I spoke with tonight. Uh, but I was trying to get an idea because I wanted to know what the younger generation was doing because clearly that seems to be who Kamala is actually uh, pulling on. And I was trying to find, maybe this is it here. Um, there was some video that I just ran across. Let me see if I can find it real quick. And I didn't know, uh, you know, it was a news clip and the crowd that, that was there was enormous. Um, and if they if they fudged it all, which they could have, um, you know, I realize that. But her choice in vice president pick was much smarter, in my opinion, than what Trump did. Uh, I personally think that if Trump wanted a very good chance of winning the election, he should have chose Nikki Haley. Nikki Haley had a very, very powerful uh, performance uh, as a presidential candidate much more than most all the other candidates uh, combined there. And then uh, Trump ended up going with the other guy for his VP pick. And I don't think that was a wise decision on his part. Uh, so anyway, the one thing I was just wanting to bring out was that I really feel like that this woman is really, really, really being underestimated. I'm trying to find if I... I don't know what I did with that one thing there. This... This MSNBC, Fox News had done one on her. Uh, here we go right here. Um, Harris has a 57% rating versus Biden, 45%. See, when they were looking at Biden running against Trump, this is MSNBC looking at the polls, um, Biden barely would win. 
I don't see how anybody could even think that, though. The poor guy, he was in such bad condition. Um, and I think a lot of people are looking, not only the fact that Biden was in such bad health, Trump goes into office not much younger than him, and they're worried that his health is going to decline much like Biden's did. Harris, they're claiming in this poll, 57% to Trump's 38%. And a lot of people are going to say, that's all fake, it's not true, Steve, don't believe that, that's all garbage. Another poll I looked at, it was 51% uh, Harris and 49% Trump. And I'm not a polls guy. I know that a lot of this stuff changes from day to day. You never can trust it, never can believe it. I'm just saying this here. All, and I personally do think that Trump is going to win. I really do think he will win. For a completely different reason, though. I also think that when he wins, it is going to be the worst decision Republicans have made in a long time. And I know a lot of people won't like that. Oh my gosh, brother Steve, I can't say, think you'd say that about Trump. You have to understand, watch what he's saying. Watch what he talks about, death penalty, bringing it back, all these death penalty, death, death, death. Everything's about death. If he becomes president, he'll go right in there with Israel and he'll go to war with Hezbollah, he'll go to war with Iran, he'll go to war with all those countries around there. He's totally blind and totally bought and paid for by Israel. I hate to say it, but he is. You want to talk about Noahide laws? I've sh we've showed you the articles before. He is the biggest contender for the Noahide laws. Israel 365 actually said he was the champion for the Noahide laws. So I have a lot of concerns because of that. And even good friends of mine that are very were pro-Trump before and even are now going to vote for him are a little bit reserved and a little bit concerned about his stance right now. Think about that. So... When I look at this situation, though, and I'm watching Kamala Harris, I, like I said, I believe Trump is going to win, but you're going to find out it's going to be barely. I do not believe it will be a landslide. And that's what's going to shock a lot of people. Now, will she try to run again later? Maybe she will. Could she win the second time around? Well, unless the Republicans come up with a good candidate, I don't see where it's going to happen. I think the other thing that does hurt Trump, too, regardless of whether you consider him guilty or not, there is so much legal issues surrounding him right now. That probably scares a few of the Republicans away. Not a lot. Not a lot. Because a lot of people believe that he's been wrongly charged, indicted, etc., and I personally do believe that as far as when you're dealing with the issues of him taking documents and stuff, every president does that. I don't hold that against him at all. Uh, I'm not going to go into that other issue on that certain date for the simple reason is they'll shut your channel down just for talking about it. So, you know, I'm just saying here as you're watching this video, I'm not for either candidate or candidates. I'm not for... I'm not for Kennedy, I'm not for Harris, and I'm not for Trump. Not for any of them. I personally think we don't have a very good selection because they're all bought and paid for. Every one of them. Regardless of who becomes president, they're still bought and paid for. Now, as far as rights, things like that, that people want, they fight for and stuff, you know, there's differing reasons for each president, you know. Women will like the fact of Harris for women's rights. She'll be more of a, uh, a fighter for women's rights. I am not for abortion, but I'm just saying that. Uh, Kennedy, he's very anti-war. I greatly appreciate that about Kennedy. Um, and as far as Trump, he's very pro-war. Um, but he is able to work with Russia, probably could work with China, and he might certainly help resolve the Ukrainian conflict. He's not going to resolve the Iranian conflict, though, in Israel. Unfortunately, I'm afraid he'll go for that war and fight it. So either way, he'll be a war president. He might calm some areas, but stir up others. Hmm. This is a tough situation, guys. I envy people trying to make that decision. 
Uh, I just can't vote for any of the candidates because I have too many issues with each and every one of them. But God bless you. Pray about what you're doing. Let God lead you. And um, I don't know what to tell you, though. That's up to each individual. And I don't hold it against you regardless of what decision you make. I still think the idea, though, of... Uh, uh, a public fund by the government and put them all on an even playing field and let them be elected based on true values would be a heck of a lot better than bought and paid for by special interest groups. Look at the House, look at the Senate. Every one of them bought and paid for by special interest groups. Very few have ever been elected that weren't paid for by the special interest groups. All right. Now, uh, here's what I want to do. I'm going to read to you first this testimony here. This is from Sister Loretta. She said, I, she actually wrote me back, said I could share her first name. And this is what she, she wrote after using X39 herself. Uh, she said, I just wanted to give you a quick testimony. Started wearing X39 patches in May. My mother passed away. She was sick and in a nursing home for five years, and I was extremely exhausted and was having sciatic pain that was off the charts. I was hurting so bad it would make me cry. I remembered Yana's testimony about it helping her when her dad passed. So started with the X39, and it was doing pretty good, job helping me with the sciatic pain. But then I started listening to the videos about glutathione patches. And thought, wow, that could help too. So I started using the sample pack I got of those. And wow, that started helping even more. So this past Friday, I woke up and in pain was maybe a one on the scale. And I was feeling fabulous and just really praising God for putting these patches in my life. So at 10.30 a.m. that morning, I took my 100-pound Old English Bulldog out for a walk and about 10 minutes into our walk around the yard, my oldest son came walking towards us. And my dog, Samson, decided he would take off running to meet him. Before I could even think to take the leash off my wrist, my left arm went straight out and my body went flying in the air as my giant dog took off. The leash was yanked off my wrist and hand and I faced and I face planted on the ground, landing mostly on my left side. The pain was so intense, I thought I was going to pass out. The left side of my chest, I felt like I had fractured my ribs, and my hand also felt fractured. And being a, uh, and a big red scrape down my nose, I felt intense pain and burning sensation in my chest and hand. So I fin finally managed to get up uh, off the ground and get inside the house with the help of my son. I took a hot shower, put on X39 and glutathione patch, and then I remembered that I also had a sample of Eon. By the way, Eon is what helps with inflammation. So I put that one on too. So Sunday I was extremely sore, could barely use my hand, and my chest and arms were very sore as well. So Again, I put on all three patches, and by the end of the day, I was feeling a little better. So this morning, Sunday, I woke up and had a small amount of soreness in the left chest and arm, maybe a two. Around 3 p.m., it finally dawned on me that I had absolutely no bruises. Those are followed by two exclamation points. I bruise very easily, and after such a horrific fall, I should have been black and blue, but praise God, no bruises. I feel wonderful tonight, and I am so grateful that you and Yana inspired me to sign up as a preferred customer to LifeWave. It truly does work. And by the way, I'm 59 years old and getting younger every day. Thank you. God bless you both. Watch all of your videos. Well, thank you, Sister Loretta. God bless you as well. She did write again. This was a little bit later today. She said, I asked her about sharing her testimony, and she said, absolutely, Steve, I would love for people to hear my testimony. And then she added, she said, just wanted to add that the wrinkles on my face are vanishing, and my hair is growing like crazy and strong, too. Now, speaking of hair growing like crazy, my wife lost so much hair, you could literally see her scalp. Very, very unusual, right? Just the other day, she showed me, 
huge sections of hair. Wasn't no more than that long, all growing through her hair, making her hair so amazingly thick again. And we believe she lost it from two things, from the attack that was done on her with peroxide intravenously, which did cause her to lose massive globs of hair. I mean, she was losing so much when she would shower, just come off in handfuls, like somebody on chemotherapy or something like that. So she was really worried it would never come back. Uh, her sister that came to visit, uh, who is severe diabetic, all kinds of issues, she started wearing the patches. She just said to my wife uh, the other day, they do a lot of FaceTimes together. She said, Yana, you're not going to believe it. My blood sugar has drastically dropped. All right. So that's even her testimony. Now listen in to here. To, uh, to this wonderful couple. It's in the body. Well, what, what happens when we say that X39 doesn't heal, they can't make claims like that, but okay, what right. heals is your own body. That yeah, God right. gives you stem exactly. cells and it activates your stem cells. And then the stem cells in your body are repairing organs and tissues. So that's okay. how it happens. But the Morgellons here, that's an amazing testimony. So many people suffering, as you said, Brian, and... Uh, that that was just like answer to a prayer for many, many people that X39 is helping. He had it on his head, his chin, his leg, everything. Most everything has cleared up. Here's, here's his arm. It looks better than it ever has looked. Wow. It's just totally That's healing good. up. It used to be really red, you know, bleeding sometimes. Over. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And, and, and it's, it's just like 90% gone. Off the charts, right? This is why I always tell you guys, listen, I'm not here trying to sell you something. I'm trying to help you with something, okay? That's what we're here to do. So look, go to LifeWave.com. This is our website right here, LifeWave.com. It'll be in the description below for you, forward slash Benun, B-E-N-N-U-N, -N -N, okay? When you go there, you can either shop or you can join. I only recommend join for those of you that are saying, you know, if this really works, I'm going to tell people about it because the company will compensate you for your efforts in sharing it, right? Or if you're a serious business person, you really want to do it as a business, then join. But if you're going to shop, you just, you say, no, I'm not interested in any of those things there. Shop, right? Go there. Mainly start with X39. Now it says X39 promotions because you could get the bundle of X39, X49. You'll save more money. By the way, those two together, they finally did do more testing. It has been determined. It does create somewhat of a Faraday cage in the skin. It is protecting, protecting people against EMF radiation. Let's just say you clicked on that, all right? Just giving you an example. You click on that, you want those two items, all right? Once you've clicked on that, if you want to save money, 279 is what it retails for. But if you want to become a preferred customer and save a hundred bucks, which I would want to save a hundred bucks, all right, go ahead and add it to your cart, okay? Click on that cart. Once you get ready to go to checkout, come up here. When you're going to click on it, you're going to check out. Click on that preferred customer. All right. Now, the preferred customer is going to give you that $100 discount. If you want to be a PC Plus for $20 once a year, they're going to send you free patches. Remember Loretta when I read to you her testimony and she said I'd gotten some glutathione patches, that's because she was a PC Plus uh, girl on there. She's not a distributor. She's just enjoying the products and getting an amazing testimony. Now, I bet you Loretta is going to end up switching to become a distributor because with a testimony like that, she starts telling her friends, I don't want her friends to come sign up under me. I want her friends to sign up with her. I want her to be benefited from it. And I'll, and listen, we do Zooms with people. We do what we can to help those that want to do it as a business. And quickly, I'll share with you if you're going to do it as a business. You're going to do it, click join. I'll walk you through this because it's better to walk you through it. Some 
you got you've got the uh, the enrollment starter. Everybody that's actually included, by the way, in these other plans. But uh, I always recommend if you're going to do it as a business, don't play around. If you can go gold, go gold. If you can't, sure, you can start at lower levels. But when you need or want more patches, upgrade. You get the patches when you upgrade. So why pay for patches separately when you're going to get them in your upgrade? But let's just say you start off as gold. Right. Let's just say you click on that. Yeah, it's 500 bucks, but you're going to get $500 worth of product. Now, the company recommends five X39 and one Aloe Vita, six different types of uh, six packages of patches. I tell you, nah, exit out of that. Even exit out of Aloe Vita. You might want Aloe Vita. I'm not saying you won't. See how that line disappeared, the green line? Go over here to patches and then choose what you want. All right, let you be the one that chooses. Now, maybe for you and your husband, maybe there's two of you in the family and maybe you even got a friend you want to share some with. So let's say you pick three X39s. One, two, and three. And every time I click on it, that yellow line goes across. That's showing you your shopping cart because you're going to get product for what you actually join for. But, you heard that sister, Loretta, talk about glutathione. So you say, wow. And she talked about Eon. I want to add both. One glutathione, one Eon patch. You still don't have a full cart. Well, X40, well, actually, you know what? I would actually choose one carnosine. Maybe you know someone that's got issues with cognitive problems, dementia, things like that. And you want to help somebody out with that. Carnosine, incredible. Now, I don't know if we have enough room to do X49. Let's see. I think that's going to put us over the limit. Oh, no, it didn't. Looky there. So we got X49 too. Let's look at what you got in your package here. Two X, three X39s, one glutathione, one carnosine, one Eon, and one X49. That's an incredible package to get right there. Then you click on continue. It'll walk you through the rest of the process about your personal information, things like that. When you sign up like that, though, always do the auto ship. Now, the, that, by the way, is not a monthly price. You're not going to pay $500 a month. That's a one-time price only. But you want to be on auto ship because if you're doing this as a business, you have to be on auto ship with two items a month. All right? And you could pick x39 for one and the fact if it's you and your wife you'll probably want to just go with two x39s the other products only get those when you need them and there again i would upgrade when you get them because you make more money as you upgrade just a thought for you to know about we can discuss it later you can join us sunday nights on our zoom calls www.x39hub.com 8 p.m eastern on sundays and of course, don't forget tomorrow, um, right now it's still 2 p.m. Eastern, and we may have to move it back to 3 p.m. Eastern. We will be live, Yana and I will be talking tomorrow on Israeli News Live. Not on our Zoom call, but Israeli News Live. We're going to have a live broadcast tomorrow with Yana. So join me there. It's going to be an exciting time. Also, EMP Shield, don't forget. Oh, and I've got to look and see. We may have gotten the permission to publish the documentary film that we did with them. So that's going to be interesting too. EMPShield.com. Don't forget the coupon code INL50. I'll put all that in the description below. Thank you for listening. Thank you for your support. And God bless you.